for Goal Week without audio issues, Box. I hear that. Yeah, I bet you do. Hey, welcome to the Mantis Show. The only podcast featuring an, uh, featuring an insect, an animate object, and more audio issues than you could ever handle. Box Watterson, audio engineer slash co-host. What's up? It's terrible. Why can't I get anything right? <laughs> and I'm your host, Mantis. Yeah, it's it's a little better than it was before, but I can still hear the hiss, the hum, the blah, 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 a little bit. Maybe our listeners can't, but I can't. Yeah. Yeah, guys, started out today. No, nothing's changed since last week. Our equipment is the same. Our settings are the same. Our EQ is the same. Everything is the same. My mic is in the same. It hasn't moved. Box, that, that mouse, it was in the same spot you left it last week. Yeah. But... We turn it on, we turn on the computer, and all of a sudden, we get, we're get we met with what sounds like a waterfall. A tidal wave of hiss. A crashing wave of just white water rapids that's that's flooding into this room. Th- that's what it sounds like. Then you take off the headphones, and it's just silent. Yep, dead, dead silent. Dead silence. There's nothing in here. Nothing going on. So please, please, just bear with us, because... Uh, we spent how long? Almost an hour? Just yep. messing with this? Just fucking with everything? Trying to... Got it as good as it's going to get. As good as it's going to get for now. So, um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess... I don't know if you listen to the Mantis show for the audio quality anyways. So, just look past it. Look past <laughs> it. And, you know... It, treat it like you treat any other mediocre thing in your life. Just... It's not the best, but it's mine. You know? Yeah. If, if you got a car and it's not, like, the best looking car... Well, at least it's paid off, right? At yeah. least the Mantis show's yeah, free. True. I mean, you're not paying for it. The Mantis show's at least free. So it's not like you got anything to lose. And this week, i got something I want to talk about. No, so, right. you know, I know being a teenager can be hard. Can, uh-huh. it can, can be. It you know, is. It's, it, it's awful. It, yeah, I mean, there's a lot you're of... You're full of chemicals that make you want to do stupid shit and... You, you don't know what to do with your body. You don't know you don't know how like what to do with other people in general. You're just or like, their bodies or their bodies. You just uh, I don't know. Is that a dude? Do I do I like it? Do I like dude? No. Uh, what or is that is that just you, Box? Uh, that, that had that feeling. No, no. I think that was just you. I have all these feelings <laughs> and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna start taking MMA and just take it all out on uh, just punch. I need to punch something. That's right. Well, man, you know I, I can understand some of what you know. I I was a teenager once, but man, I don't know what it is that makes some teenagers just the biggest fucking assholes. I don't know if it's the parents, or I, I'm a person that believes that parenting has somewhat of an impact on on on. on children up until a certain point yeah once they become conscious of their actions and they all the all the shit that you've done before then all that like if you haven't fixed it by then you're fucked right and if you are conscious enough to like be able to look at yourself in a in a way like like introspectively yeah look at yourself and look at the type of person you are I feel like from that point on, you're you are responsible for your actions, your behavior, and in general, just everything about you. Yeah, it's not the parents, because no no parent ever was a, has ever been able to discipline a teenager into acting right. Uh, I mean, it depends. Or should I say, you can make them act right, but you. <laughs> But their instinct, you can't change their instinct yeah. to act right or not. It's not like it's a... Uh, That's true. It's like a con- conscious suppression of bad deeds rather than just the elimination of the instinct to commit bad deeds. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at a certain point, it's like parenting, like you can... At a certain point, you just got to send them to boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't change them on a mental level. Well, I was at a, I was at a restaurant the other day and... I had a teenager, 
and this is one of the few times in my life I've been able to show restraint just because now, like if I punch a teenager in the face, I'm going to get arrested and get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I did what I thought was the adult thing to do. I'm standing here. There's this obnoxious teenager that comes in. I mean, the most obnoxious motherfucker. And he says something to the woman behind the counter. And then he like, he, he laughs, chuckles and looks and gives me this little slap on my lower back. Like a, <laughs> like this little, like a demeaning little thing. And it, it happened. And I was like, hmm. As soon as it happened, my eyes got big because my first instinct was to beat the living shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm like, scare me. Oh my God. You didn't mean to, sc- mm. Like you think, uh, you, like you think I'm fucking scared of you? Hmm. Fuck. Is that what you? Mm, I'm okay. scared of going to prison for the rest of my life. I'm scared of what I'm about to fucking do to you. I'm scared of what I'm about to fucking do to you. So I'm standing here. I get my sandwich. He's like, "Oh, that's a big sandwich. You know, you get your money's worth, don't you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I guess I do." I'm like, "Cause that's." Ugh, I'm just like thinking, I'm like, "That's what fucking adults do, you motherfucker. We get our money's worth out of shit." And guess what? Not only do we get our money's worth out of things that we purchase, but we get, we we get punishment that is equal to the crimes that we fucking commit because we're respon- we're held responsible for them. Yeah. So Mantis, don't ball up your fist and don't knock this dude's chiclet teeth out of his mouth. He's only fucking like sixteen or seventeen. Uh, gritting my teeth the whole fucking time I'm in here, and oh my god, dude. I've never come so close to assaulting, like assaulting a fucking minor. I hope I'm never put in another situation like that ever again. Oh man! Oh, like, it'll happen. Oh, I'm sure it will. But man, it's. I don't know if like, I don't know if this teenager's got this like angsty ball of just this ball of fucking fury inside of him, and he expresses it by being a condescending, patronizing little prick. I mean, for me, the. The one, like, uh, all the interactions I've had with teenagers have always been at the gas station. I'll be walking in, you know. They've got their lanyard with their one key on it. Yeah. And they'll be like, they'll be like hey, bro. Hey, bro. Can you buy me some cigarettes? I'm like, how old are you? They're like, uh, 17? I'm like. How about you wait a year, man? Yeah. How about you wait a year? Then, <laughs> yeah, that's then, right. That's then, what come, I'm come ask me in a year, and I'll buy you a pack. That's what I'm saying. I'll be like, because a lot of the times, like uh, the gas stations there near my house, the police like to go there a lot. Yeah, it's like, why? Well, you want me to buy you a pack of cigarettes? Why? So I can get arrested? Yeah. Do you think that's worth it to me? Do you think I give a shit whether or not you get your fucking nicotine fix? Fuck you. No. That's what I'm saying, man. I'm like, oh, hold on. Let me. Ha- have you asked this dude? This dude in blue? Yeah, you know, he, yeah. He's got this white car with these lights on. How about you go ask him? Yeah, and half you know the thing is half the time, like you never know. They they got all these fucking sting operations where they send like a minor in who looks like he's thirty, and they have him buy a pack of cigarettes and he isn't ID'd, and then all of a sudden the the police bust in and shut down the fucking place. Yeah, dude, we live in a in a tattletale, gotcha, gotcha society. Yeah, it's all gotcha. Everybody's just trying to get you. Constantly, every 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 flip of the dime, there's somebody that's scheming. They got some little fucking plot that they're putting together to try to catch you. They yeah. try to catch you. You don't even have to do it. You don't even have to buy them the cigarettes. You can just agree to it. Yeah, and you could be being sarcastic. Oh yeah, sure, I'll buy back. Oh, but, but, oh SWAT team coming yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ignore the guy down the street cooking meth. Let's let's bust this guy. Let's bust this eighty year old who. Whenever you, whenever he was your age, you could fucking drive a car without a license. Yeah. Let, let's bust this guy, this old timer who is who probably doesn't even know that it's illegal to buy you know, to buy tobacco under the age of eighteen. Yeah. If like, I smoked when I was twelve. Yeah. You know, it's like I went to I also went down to the, the, I, I went down the, to the factory, did my forty hour yeah, work at week at the steel mill, the steel mill, and then I came I came to the gas station, the corner store. Bought a pack of cigarettes. And a soda pop for five cents. Yeah. And I filled up my gas tank for ten cents. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's. I think that, that we just need to prioritize shit a little bit. Oh, dude, the priorities are all fucked up. Because, all fucked like, up. police will be like, hey, let's get the SWAT team. This guy illegally downloaded fucking uh, a Madonna album. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I was trying to think. I just pictured. I, I don't think anyone's ever accidentally da- illegally downloaded a Madonna album. No. I think that there's always just some little uh, little pop up that makes them accidentally purchase it. Yeah, all three thousand eight hundred of them. <laughs> For real. But I don't know, man. I just, I just think that there needs to be some law to where, like, if you're old enough to back sass like that. And to yeah. fucking do that, and to be, you should be able if to you're punch old, a kid. Yeah, you're old enough to buy your own fucking, uh, to drive your car. You should be old enough to get your fucking face slapped. That's right. So I'm gonna take off my white gloves that I always wear, and I'm gonna take one of them and I'm gonna go ah, slap, just right upside, just slap. That's right. How how dare you slap, 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 slap? It's gonna be like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah. I'm gonna slap, 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 slap. Or who has the white gloves? Does Bugs Bunny have big white gloves? Yeah, yeah he does. Slap, 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 slap. You, how old are you? Seventeen. Slap, 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 you piece of shit. Slap, 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 slap. I'm older than you. Slap, 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 slap. You, you don't have a nuanced view of the world yet. You don't know. You don't know what it's like to be an adult. It sucks. Slap, 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 slap. I don't, you don't know anything. Shit. You don't know anything. High school is a small bubble, friend. And once that bubble bus bursts, you, you're gonna you're gonna see that the world is is a place that sucks. Is, yeah, it sucks, and it's not populated with people wearing Aeropostale and Sperry's and Everybody has multiple keys on their lanyards, and they don't carry lanyards anymore because it weighs down their neck. Because they got re- that's how you can tell how how many responsibilities someone has, judging by how many keys that they have. Yeah, you got one key, you probably have zero responsibility. Yep. But you got a key to this, a key to that. If you've got to remember what goes where, and sometimes you forget wh- 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 where this key come from. That's yeah. that's that's when life starts to suck. Yeah, that's when things get complicated. Things get a little muddy. Yeah. That's little, how it goes. Little messy. Do you have any keys on your key ring that just you don't know what the fuck they're for, or you have keys to something that you don't even own anymore? Well, I used to, and I finally took them off like about a month ago. Oh, the the great purge. Yeah, I was like, it's like I got keys to to doors that I don't Close go the, through is, anymore. <laughs> so. Why do I have these? I don't live th- at this yep. place anymore. All of those old rewards cards at oh, stores you'll never yes. shop at ever again. Fuck, dude. I used to have some that were so worn down. They were like, there was just like a tiniest bit of plastic holding it onto the key ring. It was you, on the verge of just snapping off. I use my old uh, rewards cards to like, uh, like if I lock myself out of a room or something, oh, I'll use yeah. it to like open the door. I've got a Hot Topic card. Yeah. from forever probably yeah. seven or eight years ago that I, I it's it's still on my wallet because that's the card i don't give a shit about that i use to just jimmy open whatever door or like say there's something that i just need to pry and I'll shove it in there and just smash 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 all the time yeah exactly that's my don't give a fuck card that's right everybody everybody needs one of those teenage see that's the thing Dude. teenagers they don't know what the fuck they don't they don't know about that yeah. That's something that comes with time, with age. Cards, man. That, too. My fucking wallet is full of fucking cards. Yeah, I don't know where I get all of them. <laughs> I've got business cards from so many people. I have, like, five artists, like, little personal business cards in my wallet. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm like, where the fuck did I get this? Why do I have Why do I have this? Yeah. Why, why don't I throw it away? Yeah, and that's the thing, man. Whenever I was a teenager, only thing I had in my wallet was like five bucks and like a bank card that I never used because I didn't make a lot of money. I it's probably a good thing that teenagers don't make a lot of money. It's probably a really fucking good thing. Yeah. I can't even imagine like like actually I've seen teenagers that have like a decent amount of money and they they don't spend it responsibly. No. At all. I mean, I don't want to get too much into bitching about teenagers cuz that's a that's beating a dead horse. Yeah. Like that goes without saying. Yeah. But that's a shitty time. I feel like being a teenager, that's a shitty time for everybody. It really was. And everybody says, like, oh, high school, you'll miss it. It was the best part of your life. Dude, if you peak in fucking high school, and that's the best days of your life. That sucks. You got some fucking problems, man. Because that is literally not even not even the first, like, like if you live to 80, okay, that's like maybe, what's the math on that, fifth of your life? Yeah. It's like, man, that that's so little of it. Yeah, it's a, that's the thing. And you if know, you're just counting high school, oh my god, you know that's so little of your life fraction, that yeah. it doesn't even matter. Yeah, and, and you know you have so much left, and that's where you peaked. That's it's like that's god. why I hate hearing the the whole adage, the whole um, 
you know, oh, make good decisions now while you're a teenager and while you're young, because if you don't, it's going to fuck up the rest of your life. It's going to, these decisions are going to affect every avenue you take for the rest of your life. You know, I think it's a really stupid thing that in some cases, that's true. Yeah. In, in some regards. Why is it that the people who have the least amount of, of experience in the world, they know themselves the least amount? Why is it that their decisions are the most important? Those, those decisions that, that are placed upon them are the, the decisions that are going to follow them for the rest of their life. Yeah. It's, it's the difference between, you know, them working at McDonald's for the rest of their life or graduating from Harvard. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I don't, I think it's some, it, it's, it's true to a certain degree and then it, it it's not true. Yeah. Also. Because at, at a certain point, you know, you just got to quit being a lazy fuck, you know, yeah. get off your ass and go do something because yeah. anybody literally there's all these, you know, I, pe- I see people on my Facebook all the time complain about how their life sucks. They can't get a good job. And I'm like, I've literally drove just today. I drove past like seven businesses that said now hiring. I'm like, what is your problem? Yeah. I hate the people the most that say they can't find a job. And rather than hear me out here, rather than work at fast food, they'd rather be unemployed. Yeah. They, they, they value themselves so much that they think that no job is better than a shitty job. Yeah. And then there's the people that get a de- that, that have an option to get a decent job, like a warehouse job or something, making ten, twelve, thirteen dollars an hour, and they they'll get the job and quit after a week. No yeah, matter no. how hard it's a, too hard. Yeah. No matter how hard a job is, if I need a job, I'm going to work it. Yeah, that's like, what like, I'm saying. I don't, I don't understand how like I I think that that is the, the the place to where parenting actually affects you. Yeah. Because if you have a parent that is constantly bailing you out and you have options, that's that's what fucks shit up. You need to have no options. Your only option should be I need to work my ass off or I will fail. Yeah. You need to let you need to let your fucking kids fail. Yeah. Not true. enough people experience the sting of failure at a young age because you know, I understand every parent wants their kids to have a better life than they had. But sometimes, but but you, you have to realize that at the you, end of the day, they're going to be their own person, right? And and the reason why you're able to give your kid a better life is because you've you you've 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 had to leap over. There, there's been a couple bumps in the road. Yeah, you know, you you've had you've you've faced these these issues that you've had to overcome, and it's just you've got to let your kid fucking live their own life. Yeah. You, you can't hold their hand the entire the entire way. You need to let them fail. You need to let them see what happens if they don't work hard, if they're not respectful. You need to let them know that the world doesn't revolve around them and mommy and daddy aren't a safety net that's always going to be there. Yeah. And I, I think that's why we turned out so good, Box. You yeah. know? We've we've been there, done that, fucked up, oh, and that. fixed it. Yeah. And, you know, that's something, like, I always thought if, by the time I have kids, if I'm I'm financially well off, which I'm you know I, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not well off right now, but I definitely want to live very modestly, mm-hmm. and I want to like like if I was a millionaire, if I was yeah. a millionaire box, I'd be like, he a kid, I'll give you I'll give you what I got when I was a kid. All no, the other no, kids, my kids wouldn't know. All that. the other kids, they got like iPads and everything. I'd be like, here's a Game Boy. Here's a stick. From the 90s. You're Play welcome. Play with a stick. <laughs> You're welcome. Like, if I was a millionaire, multi-millionaire, I'd live extremely modestly. I, I'd drive a jalopy, and then as soon as my kids were in college, I'm like, hey, kid, guess what? Your daddy is rich. Ah, gah, 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 gah. And <laughs> Why do you think I was always gone on the weekends? I was in the Bahamas. <laughs> Uh, you thought dad was working second job. Why do I have accent already? Uh-huh. Uh, no, but that's, I feel like that's something I do. I'd play that kind of trickery. Yeah. You know, that, that, I think that's what millionaires should do that aren't married. They should live like super modestly. Yeah. And then meet like a girl, like work at a restaurant, and meet a girl there. And then, then date them and marry them. And then they'll be like, hey, guess what? You know how we've been struggling with bills for the past year and a half? 
we're actually rich, bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you do it, man. Yeah. I'd appreciate that so much. Yeah, of course, then they're going to get pissed. Like, why didn't you fucking tell me? We've been struggling. We've ate, we've ate ramen noodles for like two years straight. I'm like, yeah, it was, it was awful, wasn't it? Well, guess what? Filet mignon, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, dude. That's what. That's it. That's how you fix parenting, right there. You yeah. don't let them know how much money you have. That's right. For all they know, you work at a Jiffy Lube or a Valvoline. I mean, for a long time, where my parents worked, it was just a a vague mystery. They just disappeared, and then they came back with some assortment of money that ch- that I had no idea about the amount. Yeah, and you couldn't understand the 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 greatness of of the amount like you couldn't understand the you know the importance of like you, you just would you have no concept of money yeah and purchasing power in general at yeah. a young age so anyways the uh you know it warm weather man it's going away yeah it's finally starting to it's go starting away to cool off outside so i thought i'd bring a little list in a little list of this is my top five list of things that I say I want to do during the summer, but I either end up not doing it enough or not doing it at all. Yeah. Always happens. Every single year, I'm like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And it never happens. It's always too fucking hot. Yeah. Always too hot. Number one on that list, go outside. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Usually doesn't happen at all. Yeah. Hardly at all. I'm lucky... To my car, air conditioning on, to the store, to work, wherever else, gas station, and then I'm back inside. Yep. If I'm traveling anywhere, it's to go inside somewhere else. Yeah, fuck staying outside in the summer. It's, it's just too damn 105 hot. 105 degrees outside. What the fuck are you supposed to do? That's like, right. I'm not a lizard. I don't I don't require direct sunlight to heat my to heat my body, to warm my blood. It's just I'm too endothermic. Damn much. I'm endothermic. I don't need this exothermic fucking radiation coming down and blistering my skin. That's what I'm saying, Fuck man. It. It, to go outside, you have to, you have to be prepared. Sunscreen, like, and then you gotta carry like bottles of water with you so you don't die. It's it's ridiculous. It's awful. It's awful. I, I if I have to be prepared to do anything that seems enjoyable. You know, it's like it's not enjoyable getting prepared to do something. So, like, what? It's like, ah, oh, man. Way the, you know what? I might as well just stay in and watch watch a TV show. Yeah, Naruto. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't, but you know, you, you do you. You love it. Number two, this is kind of a multi little multifaceted one. Go for a morning run and go on more walks in the park. Yeah. That never never happens. I'm like, man, I want to go enjoy a nice, beautiful park. Let's go for a hike. Let's yeah. go enjoy the scenery. Let's 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 be imbued into nature. No, never. It almost never happens. It happens sometimes. Yeah, but not my enough. thing is like if I do that kind of stuff, it's always in the fall. Yeah, whenever there's actually like like mosquitoes aren't biting you on the face and giving and you, you malaria. You don't, you don't like walk through a trail and like literally every five steps is a spider web. Yeah, and there's ticks falling all over you. Oh, and if one of them happens to have that weird disease where it makes you allergic to meat, yeah, I'm oh, fucked yeah, forever. Fucking great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, nature. You're really incentivizing me to go outside. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Oh my God. I might get Lyme's disease. Yeah. So, <laughs> you said... Lime's disease. <laughs> Lime disease. Yeah, that- limes. Bunch of green fruit is gonna just pop right. up all over my body. Like, like, uh, what are those called? Bobas. You know the big things, the bubonic plague. Oh god! <laughs> it's like, but they're green. But they're green, and they're they're citrusy. Oh Jesus! At least you won't get scurvy. Yeah. <sighs> Number three, go fishing. Yeah. How many times do we say, hey, hey, let's go fishing, mantis? Yeah. Hey, box. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go fishing. Yeah. And then we go once. And then we say, you know what? This year, this is the year. We're going to go every weekend. Never happens. No, man, because you got to get up so damn early. Yeah. What's up with fucking fish, man? Like, why Why do fish, why can't they just, why can't they be like everything else and just kind of chill? Yeah. Fish are so damn, like, they're, they're you'd think they're, they'd be early, they're, they're some form of bird. They're like an early bird. But they're, they got gills and shit. Yeah. They're just like, oh, man. They're like, what time is it? Oh, it's like 2 o'clock? Nah, I ain't gonna eat shit I think for the rest I, of the yeah, day. Yeah, I think it's strategic. I think they know. They're like, man, humans are lazy as fuck. 
Let's get up now. Let's get up early. Get the day started. Get full. And then we'll take a, a nice little catfish nap. Yeah. And that's what they do. And, like, oh, and then we, we're we not going to be ready to eat until probably about two in the morning. Yeah. So. Uh, that's hope- when it begins. Yeah. It's fucking awful, man. You just can't get up in time. No. No, with, I, with I get work? up early. I get up early enough for work. On my days off, I don't want to have to do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, God, I might as well just be going back to work. Right. Number four, go to music festivals. Uh, they're all always so far away. Yeah. And they're so expensive. And it's just such an inconvenience, man. Yeah. And, and they're always music festivals. There's like two two bands you want to see. Yep. Two band. The rest of them, you could give two shits less about them. But this is your only this is your only chance of seeing them. So you're paying three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, and you're driving six to eight hours to have like a couple hours of fun seeing the people you want to see. I mean, they're they're all fun in general. Yeah. But it's just such an inconvenience. It's so inconvenient. It's so hard to get people together. You know, everybody's scheduled to get together and everything. Yeah. Oh. Number five. Number five. I know I know everybody has this problem. What's one thing that is just awful to do during the winter time? Something that's just terrible. And during the winter you think it's gonna be a more manageable feat to conquer during the summer. Uh like I don't know. Cleaning your fucking car out. Oh, that yep. I was thinking of something like that at first. I was like Probably like a car wash. Yeah. And then clean. I was like, oh, you know what? Yeah. That's Cleaning definitely out your car. It. And it's like, it, it's so hot inside. It's so hot inside of your car that like you want to leave your air conditioning on, but your doors are open. So it's letting all the air conditioning out. Yeah. So you just feel like you're wasting energy. You're wasting gas. And, and I mean, and it's so hot that if you literally turn your car off. It's instantly hot inside your car. Yes. And I mean, you're literally just feeling the breeze blow on your face a little as you lean down. From, and then also you've got to worry about like, what if I knock it into gear accidentally? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's the most inconvenient fucking thing I can think of. At least one of the most inconvenient things. And then in the winter, it's too fucking cold. And then it's too cold. It's just a bitch. They need a Roomba for the car. Yes. A Roomba. A vroom. That's what they need. That's right. It needs to just go around and it needs to... Or they just need, like, I need a fucking shock collar is what I need. Every time I go to throw something in the floor of my car, it's a zap. Yeah. Nope, don't do that. Don't, not that. You're not going to want to pick it up later. Nah, nah. It's just because, man, they're not new cars anymore. Whenever you get a brand new car, it, you're like, it, oh, I'll never, never, I'll never dirty up this car. Never, not one. There, there won't be a discarded all, all straw takes, wrapper anywhere, nothing. All it takes is that one time when you're at McDonald's and you're like, I don't eat in the car. But then you're like, man, I'm really hungry right now. Yeah, And, and you reach in the bag and pick out a fry, and one of the fries you picked up falls on the floor. That's it. It's over. Yep. Then you go to sell the car and you find that fry. Yep. And you're like, man, this still looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's my list. Listeners, give me your list. Give me your top five list of things you want to do during the summer, but you don't end up doing, or you don't end up doing it enough. Tweet me at the Mantis Show. Email us. Send us a personal message. Tell Box that you hate him. Do do something. Come on. Send me your top five saddest anime deaths. Yeah, don't send that to me. I don't. I don't watch that sad shit. I got enough. It's, it's a meme. It's a meme. Oh well, you're you're more accustomed to all that memery than I. I don't. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. Anyways, this week on Mansplaining, Gravel Roads. Mmm. So, Gravel Roads, we've all been down them. Mm Mm-hmm. We all have our, uh, that initial, that snap judgment. That thing, that that little image that pops into your mind as soon as, as soon as somebody mentions it. Yeah. Most people think of like a, like a country song. Yeah. Or... Down that old dirt road. Yeah, actually, I don't even, I don't know why people would think that. Because most of the time, country roads are dirt roads. Yeah. So, a gravel, what's a gravel road then? If it's not like an embodiment of country, it's like a, it's like a half-assed wannabe country. Yeah. It's like I'm, it's like a trailer park. Yeah, it's like, it's like I'm country enough to where there's not pavement, but not country enough to where I can just deal with dirt. Yeah. I gotta have a little something else. I'm afraid to get stuck. 
Yeah. Maybe maybe I have a a, a, a rear wheel drive truck. It's not four wheels. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe that's what maybe that's what a gravel road says to me when yeah. I think of it. I think of somebody who's not really prepared to live where they live. Every time you see a gravel road, a lot of times it leads to a house that is like like you may be on this beautiful piece of property, this beautiful piece of land, mm-hmm. and you see this gravel road and you know it's about it's stretching like a quarter mile down into the woods. You expect to come to this kind of I, I don't I don't know uh layman's palace. Yeah. This this beautiful like cabin in the woods type deal. And it, it's it's always a disappointment. Yeah. There's always just a trailer, like a single wide trailer that's that was made in the seventies and it has an asbestos popcorn ceiling. Yeah. That's what at the end of every rainbow there's a pot of gold. And at the end of every gravel road there's Joe Dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, fucking true. Anytime you find a gravel road, you know that you're in for a treacherous journey. Cause, oh, yeah. Because I know these gravel roads, they put down this gravel to give more traction so that you, you you might not get stuck. Yeah. But I think most of the time, a lot of times, it's the opposite effect that happens. How many fucking times have you dr- driven on a gravel road and you've given just a little bit too much gas? And it just <laughs> fucking spun out. Yeah, rocks spun going everywhere. Out rocks everywhere. There's no good way of handling that either. It's like, do I go get a fucking rake? And rake all these damn these damn gravel back like onto my driveway. Yeah. Do I do I like spread them back? What if it goes in the grass? Yeah. What if it goes in the fucking grass? I like, mean, that's what happens to every fucking gravel road. Is like if you have like some grass or anything right next to it, the it's it always just eventually like entropy makes the rocks go into the grass. Right. They always disappear. The rocks yep. always disappear. You always got to redo. You always got to keep putting more rocks out. Yeah. So if you got to keep putting rocks out, then like, like that that means that you might as well just pave the road. Yeah. It's gonna be the same amount of maintenance, right? Yeah. So that's why they just don't make sense to me. I think that gravel roads, I would call them the most unsustainable means of creating a pathway. Yeah. Creating a a a, a, a driveway, a, a a highway. There's a reason it's not on highways. Yeah. Because they. they they don't. They don't last long. They don't. I, it's, look, it'd be dangerous as hell driving behind somebody going at sixty miles an hour. Right. On it's, a it, to road. me, it's. I, this is where the mansplaining portion comes in. I think that a gravel road is the most ineffective type of road. Yeah. Just think about this. The whole point of a road is that it is this. It is this pathway that. Is designed it, for your vehicle. Yeah, it, well, it's designed to travel on. Yeah. Right? And I think that that something that is so basic, something like, a, like for example, dirt. Yeah. It'd be some shitty dirt if you could only grow corn in it, right? Mm-hmm. That's it. Only fucking thing that grows right here is corn. Yeah. Grass won't even grow. Yeah. That's some pretty shitty dirt, right? Yeah. So you need it to be somewhat, uh, how, how do you say, you know versatile versatile there we go yeah that's the word i was looking for it's the most it, it, it is the least versatile type of road it, it, in my opinion for a road to be versatile it should be friendly to horses which a gravel road is mm-hmm. cars which it is yeah but what it's not what it is not friendly to is two-wheeled motor vehicles or bikes like, or just a human being. Or a hu- or walking barefoot. That was my next thing. Yeah. If you can't fucking walk barefoot on it, it's the most basic the most basic form of transportation. The form of transportation that literally takes zero. You doing zero. Half feet. Be yeah. born with fucking feet. And you can travel. Yeah. Boom. That's it. And you you can't like, like dude, unless you have these giant rock fucking solid calluses on the bottom of your feet. You got these dead stubs yeah. for legs. Yeah, I, I, I implore you, walk a, walk down a fucking gravel road. That's like walking through a minefield of Legos. Yes. Oh, my God, dude. I can't tell you. I can't tell you how many times, like, because I, I, I used to live out in the country and everything. We had a gravel road and, uh, well, gravel driveway. driveway. 
but god damn, I can't tell you how many times. I've had to like pick rocks out of my feet. You got to do that little jig to get to your mailbox. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh. So, somehow you're you're hoping to not put all your weight on your feet, but it has nowhere else to go. And it's even worse in the summer because not only are the is it pointy and it hurts walking on it, but they're also hot. Yes, like pavement. Yeah, so it's like, man, I'd rather just have my feet burn without them getting stabbed. And, and see gravel roads? It, it's a form of sabotage. Because you can't go past a gravel road on a paved road that, that that intersects with the paved road. You can't go past one without it sabotaging the road and putting fucking excess gravel out onto it. Yeah. So not only is it bad in and of itself, but it also makes not bad effective pathways, roads. It makes them ineffe- more ineffective yep. just by uh, through osmosis. Yeah. What What other kind of... What other kind of infrastructure has that effect on other types of infrastructure? Like if you have a if you have a big building right here next to a sidewalk, it doesn't make the building any less effective as a building. Yeah, you could, it, it's it's still a building, but this literally a gravel gravel will get onto it, and if a motorcyclist is coming down, boom, shh, slide, road yeah. rash instantly. Yeah. That shit can get people killed. Yeah. That's why there's so many fucking accidents on... But Dude, I used to drive around on a moped. You used to go around town on a moped. Mm-hmm. Man, there was one time I was on a paved road. Yeah. You know, it was asphalt. And I went by this little, like, this little place. It was like a little house, a little business or something. I don't even remember. And there was... It had a gravel parking lot. And the gravel had went into the road... I hit it with my fucking moped, and it made me, going 40 miles an hour, slam down and landed over into the gravel, and like tumbled around and got up, and literally, my body was like, I was flayed. It was so bad. God. I was like, oh my fucking God, what just happened? I got up, people stopping in traffic, are you okay? I'm like, I I hope so, and then all of a sudden I look and there's blood everywhere. I'm like, okay, (laughs) thanks gravel. Yeah, gravel. Thank you. Jesus it's, Christ. And and also I think that it's it's an unsustainable t- you know way way of of solving our infrastructure problem. It's unsustainable. Yeah. Because eventually like there's only so many rocks that we have access to on earth right now. Mhm. Only so many. If you were to infinitely just grind up all these rocks into uniform jagged edged little small pieces of gravel then what what happens? That's like fucking, what's that called? Heat death? Yeah. Heat death in the universe to where all the energy has been dispersed evenly and there's no more work to be done, no more energy to be, to uh, for, the, for the form to be changed or whatever of the energy. It's just like that. Yeah. It's like all the big rocks are now little rocks and you don't have big rocks anymore. Yeah. I always it's think, like, uh, oh, well, we don't have mountains anymore. Yeah, but at least it's all we gravel. Got gravel. We got mountains of gravel. Yep. Good good luck climbing Mount Vesuvius or fucking Mount Everest because every time you start to go up it, your feet, the, the ground's going to slide out from underneath you. Yeah. Eventually, the whole earth will just be a gravel parking lot that yeah. nobody can drive in, nobody can walk on, nobody can do fucking anything. They can't, we can't even dig holes to get oil out because every time we dig the hole, the gravel slides back down in it. Yeah. The downfall of the entire human race could be gravel. Yep. Theoretically. Theoretically. Fuck gravel. Fuck gravel, dude. It, it's it, the heavy. only thing gravel should be used for is fish tanks. Oh, oh my God! You read my fucking mind. Even then, though. Wait, 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 wait. Even then, if you've ever had a fish tank, all the the fish shit gets down in the gravel, and it's just, it's like, man, you know, it'd probably be a hell of a lot easier if it there was just sand down there. Yeah. It was like a cat. It was like a. Uh, you know, a, a litter box. I could just scoop out the poop. But instead, you either got to completely change out all the gravel, or you got to take one of those vacuum suction pump fucking things. Yeah. And try to get all of the shit out, and it never gets it all. No. And it makes the fish tank cloudy. So what? It. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's gravel just... should be used in water filters. That's it. Yeah. That's probably it. Filtering water. I don't see any other use for it, especially not paving our roads with it. Fuck no. It just seems to me like it's irresponsible. Yeah. You know, I, I think the Greenpeace people, all the uh, environmentalists, they're they're looking at the wrong 
looking in the wrong direction right now. Yeah. They're going for like... They uh, should be promoting asphalt roads. Right. They should. And it just seems to me like mansplaining, a lot of times in mansplaining, we come to these these conclusions. We bring up these points. That's the whole point of mansplaining, to bring up something that you think you know everything about. But there's like an extra layer. Yeah. There's a, there's a fourth dimension laying right underneath it that we're trying to expose. We're trying to tap that oil vein. We're trying yeah. to tap that ass, yeah, that, and get and get the get all that shit out of there for you. The ass of truth. The ass of truth. <laughs> oh, you got anything you want to talk about this week? Uh, no, I couldn't really think of anything for this week. Nothing, nothing really crazy happened to me this week. So it's a little slow week, huh? Yeah, I get those a lot. I get those sometimes to where I'm just like, man, you know, I got a few things I want to talk about on the show, but. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it's show quality. But yeah, usually we do a pretty that's good. That's my thing. It's I, like, oh, what am I just gonna come on the show and bitch about work? You know, the same thing. Everybody bitch. Everybody's got complaints about work. If yeah. you're not complaining about work, it ain't work. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, this will be quality content just to come on and be like, man, my fucking manager and blah 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 blah. blah, blah. You know, it's like n- nobody wants to hear that. Nobody. So. Yeah, that's like nobody. That's like I try to avoid politics. Yeah. It's just so most of the time, if I talk about politics, I'm I'm being sarcastic so, or just. It's so that's pretending. why I've just decided for this week, I'm just gonna take a knee. I'm just gonna take it's a take, knee on my topic. You take a knee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, you know that's admirable, box. I, I you know, I. Uh, <laughs> I respect your right to do so. Yeah, but I, I think it it's, does it's, make I, I me look terrible, I, and I think it's distasteful. It it makes me look terrible because yeah. you know, oh, I was too lazy to come up with a topic, and look at him—he's just a lazy fuck taking a knee. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the impression that everybody that everybody yep. looks at you. That's what they think. Yep, that's exactly what they think when they look at me. They fucking taking a knee on my topic. <laughs> well. I don't talk about politics a lot, but I do sometimes refer to news articles. Yeah. Some, like, weird, quirky, goofy, funny little articles that I find around the internet. So, uh, I found this article. It's by CBS Los Angeles. And uh, the headline says, Officials, teachers might have (laughs) given flutes tainted with bodily fluids to Orange County schools in California. What? (laughs) They couldn't have been more vague about that, huh? What kind of bodily fluids? <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's let's read this article. I'm gonna read the whole thing. It's it's pretty short, and I uh, I think it'll you'll get some closure, or you, maybe you won't. All right. Uh, it says state and federal agencies are looking into a disturbing incident in which a teacher might have distributed handmade flutes tainted with the man's bodily fluids to, oh! sc- to school districts across. Orange County. Ugh, Ugh, gross. It's gross, man. Oh, my God. The California Department of Justice and the United States Postal Service, why the fuck the Postal Service, are investigating a yet unnamed music instructor for giving flutes that, that might contain bodily fluids to several school districts in Southern California, including Fountain Valley, Capistrano, and Newport Mesa agencies. The, Man, the, oh. if I thought of it, if I thought anything, I didn't think it was gonna be a man's fluid. Yeah, what? And when? Why? Why is the teacher? Why is the teacher the one being investigated and not the dude that put his bodily fluids on? What? What yeah. kind of? What kind of bodily fluids? Yeah. Like what, what? What are we? What are we talking about here? See, I was thinking. My first thought was that I was like, oh. A woman, you know, it, uh, a oh. flute, you know, it's kind of... It, phallic-shaped? It's phallic-shaped, so I've, I assume... Well, well, see, I, I had the opposite thing. I was thinking more of, like, uh, what's the name of that fucking, the band camp? Um, American Pie? Yeah. I was thinking more of, like, American Pie type deal, but the article goes on. The brightly decorated PVC flute p- pipe flutes in question might have been part of the Flutes Across the World music program. The Fountain Valley School District superintendent said in the in the register. So, what, what is that like? Is that, it does the Flutes Across the World music program, is that maybe notorious for 
having sex with musical instruments or something? Yeah, like, like, what, what the, the fuck? Why is that? And then it says, right I here, love music. Yeah, you know, I, I fucking love. I listen, I'm in love with music. Yeah. Attorney John Manley, who represented victims of the Maramont Elementary sexual abuse case, told CBS2 News, quote, until our culture and our educational system and our law enforcement and our society get serious about protecting kids, this is going to continue. And it says, uh, end quote, the school's name might have been affected our uh, Courage's Elementary School in Fountain Valley and Sonora, uh, Sonora Elementary School in Costa Mesa. Why the fuck does California have so many weird names? Yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, that, that end quote. Moral, Until- <laughs> moral of the story. Keep your keep your skin flute away from regular flutes. <laughs> what the fuck? And it never names what the bodily fluids are. And like that's such an open ended like yeah. article that some some fucking you know when they say journalists have gotten lazy. Yes, they have. What yep. the fuck is it talk? It, it says sexual investigation. So I'm assuming it's not it's it's not spit. Yeah, it's not blood. It's uh, it's probably not sweat or um like dude. What the fuck, man? Yep. One, it's fucked up, period. Yeah. It's just fucked up that that would happen. It is fucked up. And I think it's kind of dumb that the guy says, until our culture, our yeah. education system, and our law enforcement... Until we care about the kids. Dude. Literally. Name one fucking school, law enforcement agency. Uh, name a, a single pigeonhole in our fucking society and culture and our education system that, that doesn't care... About kids being exposed to bodily fluids in flutes. Yeah, like I mean, literally ninety. Well, like 99. I would say, I would say about ninety percent of all parents, which makes up a huge portion of the population in our country, since they have kids, I think they care about kids. You know, it's like, of of course, I would say literally 100%. the majority of people. Care about kids, except for the fucking people that are even like... Even then, I would say even the shitty parents that don't give a fuck about their kids are probably like, yeah, I don't think kids should be exposed to bodily fluids. Yeah. They're a flute. I- I'd say 100% of fucking people would agree with that that are parents. Yeah. And even 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 99.999999% of everybody else would agree with that. Yeah. It's fucked up, dude. It's fucked up. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. And <laughs> that's just a lawyer being a lawyer, though. Blaming everybody. Mm-hmm. Even though there's just some fucking crackpot fucked up dude. We're gonna sue everyone. I'm sue you. I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> it sounds like Donald Trump, doesn't it? <laughs> Donald does. You're fired. Sue. Yeah, and you sued. I'm gonna sue. <laughs> oh my god. God. Anyways, you've been listening to the Mantis Show, guys. Thanks for coming back every single week, talking to us or not talking to us because we're talking to you. Thanks for listening to us. Just in general. Me and Box really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at The Mantis Show. Box at... Box Watterson. At Box Watterson. Tweet at us. Give us your questions, comments, concerns. Give us, shoot us an email at TheMantisPodcast at gmail.com. And we'll see you next week, guys.